everyone how's it going team here and uh, this is yet another building products with javascript special so today i want to talk a bit about online privacy and security you know as a javascript developer you should be aware of well all the risks that javascript really brings with it and you know the longer the javascript develops the more features we have the larger are those risks Obviously, the simplest example of JavaScript uh, problems is the cross-site scripting, right? It's something when um, a website is not implemented correctly, it can allow the attackers to execute client-side scripts and run something on the server. So for example, you go to my page, but you can execute the scripts that are actually requesting data from Facebook with my cookies, which is you know, not something you really want. So obviously, Facebook it doesn't have any XSS as of now, I think. They had some before. But this is a real threat and you don't really want to try and run all the JavaScript you see there. If you are unsure about the that the websites you are logged into have the XSS protection set up properly, right? Um, if websites manage to actually execute the successful XSS and steal your credentials or change your password in login or whatever, I can highly recommend a website that is called Have I Been Pound? It's uh, managed and maintained by Troy Hunt. It is an amazing website. You can just enter your email here and know all the breaches that you've been in, in uh, included into, right? So there's like millions of entries here. And uh, if we if we uh, type in my account, for example, we'll see that, you know, I've been more than um, in one of them. And yeah, there's like Adobe Breach, there's Bitcoin Forum, there's Bitly, there's CD Project Red, because I already changed all the passwords there because I'm using uh, LastPass, for example. The password managers help immensely here. Uh, you can easily change the passwords and, you know, never reuse passwords because all that stuff is not very pleasant to deal with. But um, you can basically subscribe here for notifications and you'll get notifications that will just tell you whenever you are compromised, which is great. Uh, so if you haven't used it, do use it. If you are able to, please donate. And you know, it's a great service and uh, it's just nice thing to support. Right, so this is problem number one. Problem number two is advertisement, obviously. So pop-ups, pop-unders, tab-unders, and all that bollocks that everybody hates that, I mean, there's less of them now because people hate them and just stop using the websites, but they're still there, they're still around, they're still annoying as hell. And for example, tab-unders is something that uh, Chrome only recently started saying that they will start blocking it from the next versions. Ads are always annoying, and some of them can be obnoxious, right? Um, Another thing that comes together with ads is actually tracking. So even the Electronic Frontier Foundation has the page on how to stop tracking and recommend installing ad block, changing cookie settings, turning off refers and using HTTPS everywhere. Um, that is actually not enough. So this won't help you 100%. This will prevent some tracking at least. But, you know, guys like Facebook, they use um, those Facebook buttons, the share buttons that you see everywhere, for example, to track people wherever they go. So Facebook basically knows what pages you visited. If you are logged into Facebook and you visit a page, with the Facebook button on it, the Facebook will know that you was there and they can track you this way. And that's like, I'm sure this is the simplest example. I'm sure they have way more elaborate ways to do that. Um, yeah, so there's a... More than one article explaining that, uh, including, you know, people getting ads when they was like using the apps on the phone and fa in with, with the Facebook app installed. They like the Facebook are crazy about tracking. They want to know about like everything about you to suggest you better content. And, you know, partially I do believe them because uh, in age of machine learning and AI, you do need a lot of information to actually make the machine learning relevant. On the other hand, that is not something I personally want to provide to them. So, yeah. Now there is a new thing out there. Um, it's a JavaScript based coin miners. So this is quite literally an embeddable JavaScript bit that you can paste into your page. If I press this button right now, uh, okay, it's actually blocked right now, but uh, let me just unblock that. Um, I don't think, I don't know if it's, yeah, it's still blocked. So let me just uh, unblock it everywhere and uh, you will actually see it. You know, it uses two threads. It, it, does 30 hashes per second. That is a pretty heavy impact to your CPU. If we actually go to the more tools and open task manager, we can have a look at the coin hive tab. And okay, that's like 25% of my CPU, but I have a pretty high end CPU, you know, it's, it's pretty powerful. Plus the website from the coin hive actually limits this stuff. And uh, by default, I believe it's not limited. So if you 
Basically, if you come onto the website and you don't know about the miner there, it can just load your CPU to 100% and will eat your performance, it will eat your power, it will eat your money ultimately through the, you know, increasing the power of the uh, your PSU and so on. Um, so again, this is not something you want to do involuntarily, right? So um, they promote that as an alternative to advertisement, which is, I think, actually fine. So if you run, for example, these two threads, it loads 25% of my uh, CPU, which is absolutely fine with me. And uh, in some cases, I could see that, you know, I could, while I'm, for example, reading articles about video games, I would be absolutely fine with the minor mining in the background. You know, that's, uh, I've read that it's just slightly less, um, brings slightly less more revenue than the advertisement because the the, the uh, Monero currency they mine is not that expensive yet. Maybe it will be more expensive in the future. So it brings not as much money as the traditional advertisement, but it's not, not as obnoxious, you know? And while I'm reading the article, I don't really care about the CPU usage. So I can see myself allowing to uh, run this crypto miner to some websites that I trust, but it all comes down to the trust here. And finally, the last thing is the size of the average web page. So there was this amazing article from uh, 2016 actually the beginning of 2016, which said that the average web page is now the size of the original Doom. And um, I think it's even way larger right now. I do remember there was a, ah, right, HTTP archive is the one uh, who track that stuff. So um, this is April, yeah, this is the old data. So let's have a look at the new data, shall we? And get terrified. So the average page size is now 3.3 megabytes. That is insane. Now, what do you deal with it? How do you deal with all of that stuff? Well, I want to recommend you two extensions that can help you prevent all of that, really, unless you actually want to allow uh, people and websites that you trust and you want to support to display ads for you. So number one is an ad blocker. Um, I'm, I, at least I hope that most of you use ad blockers because, you know, all of that JavaScript bonkers is insane. Um, but I want to recommend you one specific ad blocker. It's called uBlock Origin. It's uh, made by a user uh, called Gorhill. It's an amazing piece of work. It's the fastest ad blocker out there and it allows you to do um, insane things. And it actually saves you memory because it blocks network requests. It not, doesn't block um, in the way that Adblock Plus does, for example. It just injects the CSS and, and uh, JavaScript that prevents other stuff from running into the page. At least it did at some point. I don't know, maybe they rewritten that. But uh, uBlock Origin actually does prevent requests to the uh, pages that are basically to the resources you don't want to request, right? So this makes it way more efficient, both uh, CPU wise and memory wise. And, you know, um, it has a lot of documentation. It's pretty great. It supports all your typical third party filters that you would imagine. There's like a ton of them. You can also add custom ones, obviously. Works great. Your, uh, you can uh, also create your own rules, obviously, and um, whitelist websites, as you might imagine. So all that stuff is here. Now, ad block is fine, but obviously it won't block everything. So, uh, example, if we go to Washington. Uh, Washington Post, right? And we open the page. So just to have a look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, disable all my blocking add-ons and we're gonna refresh the page. I'm gonna have a look at the network tab. And here you will see that we are still loading stuff. Uh, okay, just uh, slightly smaller. So we're gonna scroll through the whole page just to make it load, right? Uh, it doesn't seem to have any scoring. So it loaded 1.1 megabytes of things and there is um, a lot of scripts there that I am sure are not coming from Washington Post themselves, right? So now I'm gonna enable ad blocker. And uh, here you can see that actually what kind of things were blocked and uh, what kind of things were not. So the, as you can see, ad block doesn't really block all of that. So it only blocks this new relic stuff, which is, I believe it's a tracking bit. And then there's the um, ads website that is partially blocked. But everything else is allowed. So theoretically, that's not in ad block thing and it's not considered ad space, right? Well, the next extension I want to show you is called Umatrix. It's from the same developer, um, but it actually allows you to block and allow any requests, not just like JavaScript or ads or, you know, anything. 
So basically, this is how it looks. I already showed it briefly. It allows you to block cookies, CSS, images, media, scripts, XHR requests, frames, and other, which is, you know, basically. So by default, it only allows first party requests and first party everything else. And everything else is blocked. So basically, if we reload this page now, and I open the console, you actually see there's a lot of requests that are blocked by client and they are specifically blocked by the U matrix, right? If we have a look at the network, uh, if I just scroll around here, we're going to load some images. It's now 284 kilobytes. So that is a lot smaller than before. Uh, bear in mind, of course, there was some cache here and there. So, but still, it blocks most of the requests. And if I have a look at the number of requests it tries to do, you will be terrified of what your what, or what the websites you visit actually try to request. So, all of this red stuff is what it blocks by default. This is usually advertisement tracking and like privacy or basically online tracking systems, right? So, there's double click ads. There's the effective measure. There's Google's indication, Google Ad Services. And there is like, if you think that this is only one request, so if you actually allow it, you can selectively allow one or more things. And refresh page, this usually brings like 25 more requests together with it. So I'm not going to do that now because it takes ages to do that. But the cool thing is, uh, if you do want to support website, you can selectively allow things. And um, here's another interesting thing. So by default, all of those tracking websites, they use cookies, obviously, to track you across the whatever websites where, where they are embedded, right? But you can actually disallow that. You can still allow to show the advertisements, like for example, using Google syndication or Google ad service. You can still allow JavaScript, you can still allow XHR, you can still allow iframes that would show you the ads, but they won't be able to track you because you blocked cookies, or at least they won't be able to track you as precise as they were before, right? So um, I, for example, I, do like a website called Massively Op. Um, I read it quite frequently. And as you can see here, I have ads. I have the ad block disabled because, you know, I want to see their ads. I want to support them. But if we look at my UMetrix config, you will see that I actually don't allow cookies collection and I don't allow some images that are tracking images. So like, again, some of those services use images to track people. And I don't want that. I just want them to show me the advertisement and that's it. And that's what exactly what I do. I allow advertisements and I disallow everything else. So those guys get money, I don't get tracked, everyone wins, you know. Um, yeah, so this was UMatrix and UBlock. I highly recommend them. They are available for just about any browser, I believe. There is Firefox, Chrome, Opera. I believe there was UBlock for, um, yeah, Edge as well. So basically, you know, most of the popular browsers are here. Um, I don't know. I think there were some ports for other browsers. If you are using something obscure or, you know, not, not, not the mainstream stuff, basically. Um, Umatrix is a bit more trickier because it does relies on request blocking. Um, it doesn't work in Firefox because there's some, uh, things in, I think in, no, wait, does it? I think it does work in Firefox. They, they've released the version, but uh, basically, yeah, I think, I think that's about all I wanted to show you and all I wanted to talk about. So if you're doing JavaScript, I think you definitely use those add-ons and protect yourself online. If not, well, then that would be a good thing to do as well. It will take a bit of time to figure out all of this if you're not a developer, but uh, it's definitely worth it in my opinion. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, thank you for watching. And as usual, I see you next time. Bye.